Good evening. Good evening. I've been coming to Ghana since 1998. I actually came as a study abroad student in 1998, and I've been coming ever since. And then we've been here consecutively the past eight years. Um, so, I've, okay. so I wanted to share with you some things, um, I guess, to what you can do when you actually get here. And I think the first thing you need to do to come to Ghana, or even I think in Africa and, and our countries in general, come with a plan, right? You need not stick to it because things will change, but at least come with something that you can do to give back. Health and education, tops. Um, at nursing homes, a lot of the age, um, Ghana's experiencing the, some of the same problems the U.S. is experiencing, right? Everyone's working, no one's in the home, and you have a lot of the aging population and no one to provide for them, right? So nursing homes are needed, of course, schools and, and good hospital services. Um, training of nurses, you have one of the biggest problems in Ghana, you have a higher chance of dying at the hands of a nurse than from the actual disease wow. or the illness because they are so poorly trained, they're overworked, um, they're underpaid, and they're not motivated. Um, being a teacher, a nurse, and an arm robber are like within the same thing. No one wants to do either one, right? So people who don't want to hold you up are going to the field of teaching and nursing to show you how very low, um, you know, people are not motivated in those fields. That's not the field you go to for with passion, right? It's the field you go to where you can't do anything else, unfortunately, to be put into blood. Um, the other thing I, I think is important to do when you get here is like reach out, form a community, let other African Americans know, other diasporans know, other people know that you're here. Um, I, um, my past eight years, and by the W. Bill Test, we're, we've been members of the African American Association. What I've realized with, because um, I'm from Haiti, what I realized with the African American population in Ghana, I found that the African American population um, in general tend to be too hard on one another, right? Um, Tension where there shouldn't be tension. Because um, you're former Bermuda, I tell people all this, like a Haitian can cross the border illegally on Friday, on Monday has a place to stay, on Tuesday starting at a job, right? And we don't care what your politics are, but as long as you're in that country, you need to help people or you're gonna step up. You know, um, in Haiti, there are a lot of people I probably would, my parents would probably never let me speak to. But in the U.S., I was calling uncles to people who were Maputs, right? Yeah, because now things change. You're in a foreign land, and all hands need to be on deck, right? You need to throw away all your, I mean, of course, when you go home, it's like, I'm not talking to a Maput, but when you're in a foreign land, all hands need to be on deck to be of service to one another, to protect one another. And I think African Americans need to have that sense of a community and just be there for one another in a foreign land, because when one of us succeeds, <coughs> then it spreads, right? It's a domino. So farm community, find the like minds, and be of service. Let people know what you can do, right? There are schools that need your help, there are hospitals that need your help, there are so many places where you can go, and by giving back to these communities, you're also uh, publicizing what you can do, right? So let people know what you can do, and then go out there and, and do something. Um, your skills, so let people know what your skills are and what you can do. Join an association or form an association. The African American Association um, currently probably has five members who attend meetings. Why is that? The Indian community, when they have their association meetings, there are no chairs. There are so many people who actually attend this meeting, the Lebanese community. But the African American Association, for the past three or four years, I would say, you can count how many people attend the meetings. All right, so if you don't like that association, then form one. But don't sit back, complain that Ghana's you know, nothing is working well in Ghana when you haven't found like minds to help you solve some key problems. Things that could be very simple eventually will look like they're major and maybe a cause for you to run back only because you haven't brought minds on deck to help you solve some simple issues. Because they will come, right? Um, be patient with one another. Be patient with Ghana. Be patient with Ghanaians. Understand that American, um, as Americans, you're coming with a lot of the media baggage that allows you to think of negative of Africa, right? So be patient with some of the things you're seeing. You're seeing everybody with European names. Well, colonization happened on this side too. Yeah. You're seeing a lot of people who are Christians. Well, don't forget, we're exploited globally. It wasn't just in the U.S., right? That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. Globally. 
Yeah, it's a global problem. So, don't, don't, oh, they seem so British. Well, you're very British too, you know? So, just understand the global effect of the domination that we under. Be safe. Um, a lot of African Americans, unfortunately, have fallen victim to a lot of uh, fraud or scary stuff that could have been easily prevented. We had one member of, um, of the community who was house hunting. She went to this area of Cantonments and she met a guy. Again, already Ghanaians would already know wrong, 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 right? You can see where the check test goes wrong. And she meets a guy and she says, oh, I'm interested in buying this house. And the guy said, it's my house. Bring the down payment of $20,000. <laughs> and then we can start the paperwork. I'll give you keys. She said yes. And she did. Uh. And the guy has never been found again. <laughs> and then she ran back home. How Africans hate African Americans. Ghanaians don't like us. They don't respect us. But that was your one experience with this one guy that you failed to use common sense with. Because if I'm house hunting, and I've been house hunting a while, I talk to people I know. Brother David, do you know someone? Yes, I know, and then Brother David connects me. Because if something goes wrong with that person, I can find him through Brother David. But when you're doing these things independently, and you just got here, oh, I met someone on the bus. Oh, he was so nice. How do you find this person? Or oh, you bring these people into your home. Yeah. How do you find them if something goes wrong? And I have a homeschooling association, and we've had cases. We have one case of uh, it wasn't a home, uh, it wasn't a person part of my homeschool group, but there was this one woman who, whose nine-month-old child was found dead, and Nanny disappeared, and no one found Nanny. Again, just finding people independently. You have to be able to trace people, to track people. So find people you trust, and have them connect to refer you to others. And don't be too quick to make family. I mean, <coughs> you're here for a greater purpose than if Ghanaians like you, if Ghanaians don't like you, your neighbors don't talk to you, right? The spirit is guiding you for something bigger. So don't let some pettiness that, oh, you know, people calling me American or people calling you a Bruni. You're not, you know, you, we've, we've, uh, <laughs> you know, we've survived much greater stuff than to be, you know, to be focusing on so much pettiness, like leave that alone. I mean, it's a concept of, you know, if I'm like, I tell people all the time, can't you tell, don't you know the difference between the African American and the Caribbean in the US? Yeah. You can tell the difference, right? We're wearing socks with, you know, we're wearing socks with uh, dress pants, yeah. dress shoes, right? We, we stand out. <laughs> Everybody stands out. The same way I can pick out a Senegalese from, you know, yeah. Right? So don't be like, this is just you. It's everyone. I think African Americans tend to be too sensitive on us. They don't like us. We're slaves. And all that no one's thinking about that. But if someone is thinking about it, set it straight and move on. Right? Don't like, dwell on it. Like That should be what keeps you from following the spirit, from following the law. So know that your return is much greater than you being able to make friends with people like you if your neighbors are cheating you. Okay. So know that slavery colonization is global. They're ignorant about you, you're ignorant about them. Yeah. So we're kind of even here, yeah. right? So, yeah, sure. so it's just take an opportunity to learn and you know move on. Okay? But if you're stressed, Find a group to talk to. Find someone. Call someone and vent. And most likely, and let it, and let it go away. Have a blog. I have a blog. Find a blog. Find a place where you can vent it off. But understand that is very. Um, and I have a few associations I've founded to help African Americans and attorneys in general help Ghana maintain that brain game because it is so important that you stay and that you have a positiveness about your stay here. Because when you do run back for the little things and then you you let the world know. It's like worth a million people. You yeah. just cause one million people not to come back. That's how powerful the negative energy is. Right? Because if one person said, oh, I went to Africa and they didn't respect me. And then you're like, where in Africa did you go? You went to Ghana. Where in Ghana were you? Accra. What part of Accra were you? How many people did you meet? Like, how many people could you possibly have met for you to analyze now, to generalize? That you're not that important, you know? So I think if you keep that in mind. You know, like, Muhammad's not sitting up at night, you know, there was one sister who thought, like, 
the president and the government of Ghana sitting up thinking of ways <coughs> to keep African Americans out of Ghana. It's seriously not that serious. You know, I think in any country, you come in with assets, you come in with ways to develop, arms are open. There's no difference. I've been an immigrant all my life, and I understand, so that's why I understand the concept. There's nothing you're experiencing here that we are not experiencing a hundred times worse in the U.S. Okay, so, yeah, so that's it. Talk to people. All right.